Paolo Bancaro has been considered one of the true contenders for the number one pick for a few years now. The 6'10", 250 pound forward had a great freshman season at Duke capped off by a final four run and his combination of size, athleticism and overall creation gives him some potential star qualities unlike many other prospects. Whenever talking about Paolo, it's hard not to start with his physical attributes. He's listed at 6'10", 250 pounds, and though the college listings are always good for some exaggeration, I wouldn't be surprised if he's even flirting with 6'11 in shoes. Based on his current height and weight, the most similar players to him in the league today are Ben Simmons, Bam Adebayo, LeBron, and Dwight Howard. And yeah, he's still just 19 years old. He's present in all aspects of his game, he moves like a wing, can do damage and turn on the Jets in transition, and while I wouldn't say he's in the highest tiers of explosiveness, he can still get up, especially with a clear runway. Bancaro scoops it, dishes, back to Bancaro, this is too strong, Bancaro the rebound, and it's 6'10", 250, going close to nine. 1,114, which will be 15 after today. Now, Paolo's ability to create for himself and others is unique and something that could potentially separate him from the others at the top of the draft. At that size and age, being able to put together some of these dribble combinations into pull-ups and most importantly, putting pressure on the defense, driving all the way to the bucket, it's just not normal. He was easily one of the most efficient short and mid-range jump shooters in the country. He got to his spots using a few different moves and he has impressive footwork. Carroll, big time. Third corner, and Carroll, pretty soft touch. Alabama and Armour going against each other. Powell has size advantage on Alondis Williams, shoots over it. Mentally and physically strong group that Virginia Tech has. Bancaro, the pull-up. Virginia Tech plays in their versatility. Duke's gone with Bancaro at the five spot. He's dangerous as a driver, especially when he gets going downhill off dribble handoffs, high screens, and of course his own creation. The spin is definitely one of his go-tos and is effective using his size to his advantage. He's quick, agile, and flexible enough to make it really tough to stop. He'll drive in, spin and lay it. a beautiful take high off the glass of the long outstretched arm of Mark Williams. And Carroll. Looks at drop zip spin. Pretty. And Carroll sizing up McCoy. Spins. And raises. He is terrific. Bancaro helped by a lead, but Bancaro gets since Virginia Tech opened up an eight-point lead at 42 to 34. Duke's on it. Bancaro turn around and he's leading the ACC to both three-point percentage and free throw percentage. Sweet. I'm not sure there's anybody in college basketball that can defend against this great footwork, patience, and be able to that second Back jump. That play that ran before open side elbow catch. Bancaro. Knows he's got a guy off the bench on him right now, and Hall wants to challenge him, puts it up and ready. Right out of the timeout, what a call. And Bancaro posting up, takes it in. Controlling the pace, high low, high low, pretty. And year of this event, Duke six and four in the Champions Classic, Kentucky five and five over the years. The first half, and Coach K talked to his team about making sure that this game was played at their pace. Coming into the year, playmaking was something that looked like it'd be an immediate strength for Paulo. And while he had some growing pains and typical freshman adjustments early on, over the course of the year, he and Duke figured it out, and he was pretty special here. Good minutes early tonight for Roach. Look at that pass. Throw it 
He naturally drew a lot of attention, and while it's a simple read, he consistently made those driving kicks on time and on target, which is more important to me than some of the flashier eye-catching passes. Now he had his moments, but did a pretty good job overall of not forcing and making the correct play. Thank Carroll. Nice job. Stop. Georgia Tech has to be careful that you remember Georgia Tech just had an opportunity to make this a one. He also showed he could make those touch lobs, wraparounds, and drop offs, and he often disguised the hard drive perfectly. He grew a really nice chemistry with a play finisher like Mark Williams, and often used the no look to his advantage. Watching episode eight because I'm not trying to hear about Randolph Childress in this ACC tournament. <laughs> And Carroll, another great look, Dunk Goes with two minutes to go in regulation. Up top, back out with it. Four. Oh, oh he almost walked. And Carroll lobs it. Gary backs up for three. That one drop for him. Keels. Tough angle. Follow won't go. And here come the Blue Devils again. And Carroll. One of the bigger growth areas for him as a passer came in the post, and by the end of the year he was extremely comfortable and did a great job of processing where the doubles and help were coming from, and often made the right decision. That's good. You kind of take guys like that for granted sometimes. Now touch on the block. His ability in the pick and roll both as a scorer and as a passer opens up so many different offensive opportunities. Maybe it won't be there right away, but at that size he already looked great snaking his way into open jumpers and finding teammates in a way that no one else in this class can. Now to some areas he can improve, starting on defense. Paulo was kind of frustrating on this end because he would have these awesome moments in better games, but he was still lacking in several areas. Everything from off ball awareness and timing to rotations and pick and roll defense, he's got to be better and at the very least eliminate the glaring lapses that don't have much of an explanation. He has some flashes of weak side rotations that really pop given his athletic tools, but it definitely wasn't consistent enough for me to bet on it. There's some long term upside, but his lack of ability here limits some of his potential as a five man. Drives by Williams, rejected. Faulkner, the roll. Oh. Williams now stuck. Nice oh, pass. Oh, found Wade. And that was Dan Carroll that's been the mismanager, AJ Griffin. As the big or man guarding the screener in pick and roll, he needs to be more disciplined and see the play developing. He was consistently a step late or there was just a general miscommunication from him and his teammates that led to him already being at a disadvantage before the guard even got around the screen. Davis driving. Gotta do your work on Williams. Nice drive here. Shannon. I think overall in one-on-one -on -one situations he was fine. His best moments were extremely impressive in the ways he was able to hang with some high-level guards, but that wasn't without the times he'd get beat off a sloppy closeout, be a bit lethargic, or show little resistance for whatever reason. With 10 on the shot clock, the baseline drive reverse. Yes, it was there, up ahead. Love. He goes past Williams and lays it up to there. Carolina. You'll be here for that one, but yes, sending our best wishes to Coach Kelly. Hauser wants it. Nice Got it blocked. Each defense on. Long on the drive. A little bit more as they lock him down in that post. Over it. Driving on to Van Carroll. Can't get a shot. On this end, I'd bet on him being better in the league. Maybe not right away, but there are a lot of things I think can easily be fixed. It is cliche, but those times where he turned up the effort or was locked in, he made a positive impact where some prospects just aren't physically capable. Foul shots there with a two nothing and the theft. Big Carolina attack. He'll slide it down. Good hands. 
kept alive. Nice job there by Orange. And then the ball is loose. And Ben Carroll will finish it. And it's without a point. It's allowed Duke to pull away here. Denied! Paolo's a capable three-point shooter, and I'd bet on him being league average in the future. But this is an area for growth, and like the defensive end, his effectiveness here, especially on spot-ups, really changes how well he fits and complements a team. And to me, the primary focus here should be taking shots in rhythm with no hesitation and being more consistent mechanically. Shots seem to be rushed right now, but Anton Watson did a great job of tapping that out. Moore got rid of it just in time. Bancaro for three. Bancaro for three. No one really wants to help. These two teams met twice last year. Each one is sort of playing Notre Dame, who was second in the ACC behind the Blue Jays. Could have been partly cloudy, Murphy. <laughs> ben Carroll. So, it appears not only obviously for his program. Great night from Griffin. Ben Carroll started them well in second half. It's pretty standard for young players, but he's still got some decision making and control things to patch up. We talked about some of that indecisiveness, tightening the handle and ball security should be a point of emphasis, and then keeping things simple and knowing when to and when not to be physical. Those are all things that will help him take his game to the next level. The right. Nice hands. Oh, Tore the same ACL twice in high school. One tickets to every game if he knocks down five threes in the first half. This has been magnificent. He's him around. And he's a perimeter player. Gives a little shot fake and drives by. What a great one. I definitely think Paulo can be an all-star, possibly even a borderline all-NBA candidate at his best as a dynamic playmaking forward that we've seen grow in popularity over time in the league. And then floor-wise, I would bet on him being a starter-level guy that might be a clunkier fit for great teams if those swing factors don't get to a certain level, but a key contributor nonetheless. He's basically a lock to go in the top three to four, and out of the realistic teams, I'd like to see him most in Orlando, Indiana, or Detroit. Miss, miss. Here's the ball back to the Clippers. Blake Griffin with a spinning. Blake Griffin with the basketball. Makes the pass. Throws it. Blake Griffin and oh, pulls his way. Seven. He's got 26 now. Griffin puts it down. Blake Griffin with a nice pump fake. Now a step back. Facilitates like a point guard in their offense. Griffin finds the open man. Greg. Blake Griffin over James Johnson. Paulo Bencaro simply brings things to the table that no one else in this class really does. If he can be a more consistent defender, continue to grow his game on the perimeter, and hopefully be used a bit more creatively, he'll undoubtedly make whatever team he picks happy and make an eventual run for best player in a draft, whether he was picked first or not. Shay gon' be the first, so I'll forever be the second. Who rep Lamar Park is something you ain't got a question. They like, now I'm grown up, better than we expect. You can see it upon my show.